keep in mind, lemons are for eating, not throwing at the speaker. So <laughs> I would appreciate that <laughs> if you keep them. Yeah, they, they would hurt. That would be really painful. Um, I do have these flyers. If you haven't picked one of these up, please go ahead and take one. Deborah will bring them over to you. These are the notes of the slides that I will be showing today. I'm going to be talking about all these Wikipedia pages, but only maybe a minute or two on each, not even that maybe in some cases. And I want you to be able to look at them and say, um, oh, that's interesting. I'll look it up later because I can still pay attention to what Susan's saying and not have to worry about making notes or anything like that. These pages are going to go up on the screen. I don't want you to read it. I know it's by nature. You guys are going to be contrary and probably try to read them. But this way you'll be able to go back and you'll have the correct spelling of everything that I had done. And if you are finding that I'm joining on a little too much, you'll be able to say, at least she's almost done. I'm falling along where she's at. So <clears throat> I am Susan Gerbic. I do have many different activism topics. I do lecture all over the world. And uh, tonight I am going to be speaking to you today about girl skepticism on Wikipedia. This is a project that is about five years old, and it is uh, inspired by different people from the skeptic community. We write on many, many different topics because it depends on what uh, each editor finds of interest to them. And tonight, all the examples I'm going to give to you are atheist related. All the examples I'm going to give to you are pages that we have rewritten or written, and I mean extensively. These aren't pages we've just made some kind of addition to, like added a citation or added a paragraph or two, nothing like that at all. These are all examples that we have completely rewritten and they exist in the condition that they do because our, our group um, made that so. I want to address just two small things that were not part of my lecture, but I want to make sure that you guys understand just talking to you beforehand. I want to make sure it's clear. I do not work for Wikipedia. Almost no one works for Wikipedia. I'm a Wikipedia editor, like thousands, hundreds of thousands of other Wikipedia editors. It's totally a volunteer group. Um, and when I use the word they, or I say they erased this off of Wikipedia, or they changed it, or we agreed on this, I'm talking about editors just like myself. If you can imagine that this room right here of people, as diverse as you all are with all the life experiences you've had and the training that you may have or not have, decided to work on a page for Mormonism or Scientology or some obscure page that almost no one's heard of, you would virtually be discussing the, the changes that would happen to the page. So when I say they decided, that's people just like you. There's no they out there floating around that some person in charge. There's no real police. There's no real admins. I mean, there are admins, but they, they are maybe one admin for every I don't know, 10,000 different um, editors of Wikipedia. So they are us. So I just want to make sure that's clear that everybody understands that. So next month you're going to be having, um, and this is kind of interesting, David Silverman's going to be speaking to you. Um, I'm going to hopefully try to make that myself because I am a fan of David Silverman. And I am going to be using him at the beginning of this lecture. So it's just kind of interesting how things work out. So. David Silverman, if you know, has been the person in charge of the, oops, oh, there it goes. Oh, isn't that awesome? <laughs> this is a logo made for us by um, a man who does a cartoon, um, Carbon Comics, and uh, quite funny, examines a lot of topics in the skepticism world. But this is our logo for real skeptics. And David Silverman, whom's page we have not worked on, or if we have, it's just been tiny little things. I have this here just because I use Wikipedia for just about everything. But David Silverman has done quite a bit of lectures lately. One of his missions is that he's talking about how it is activism to call yourself an atheist. And um, he'll probably, maybe he'll talk to you about that whenever you see him next month. And I think that I agree with what he says. And um, whether you want to call yourself an atheist or not, you rather use the word free thinker or gnostic or whatever words you want, you can talk to him about that. What um, some of the things he says is that atheists, if you were to look at a survey in America today, actually only 2.5% call themselves an atheist. Um, everybody else is using things like Jedi, um, Klingon, you know, um, 
Reformed Christian, Reformed Catholic, or I'm Christian even though I don't go to church and I don't believe. But they, they say these things, and if we were to actually start using the word atheist, we would find that there's probably more closer to 25% of America are atheists. And once we start using the word atheist and we start counting ourselves as atheists, whether to our friends and family, we might say something else, you know, I'm more comfortable with the term free thinker or, or something like that, or secular. But if we start using the word atheist, what we're gonna find is that the, the politicians are gonna have to take us more seriously. Um, you're gonna find that it's gonna be more comfortable for other people to come out as atheists as well. Um, right now, he's saying that to be using other words other than the word atheist, then it's, it's making the word sound like it's something to be ashamed of. Politicians ignore us. We're trying to please people who hate us. That's some of the things he says. And by using other words, we're dividing ourselves over nothing. We look insignificant. Okay, well, with all that said, I am not the most eloquent of speakers that you're not going to be able to, you're going to be able to find lots of people who will inspire you with their rhetoric about atheism and, and, and so on. You'll also find many, 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 most people who are better writers than I am. I am a doer. I'm the type of person who always wants to be doing something and trying to trying to to um, better society, trying to better things, trying to make people into, um, you know, I want to be your cheerleader. I want to be the type of person that's going to help you do what it is that you want to have done. But I am not a lecturer necessarily, like I say, and I'm not the greatest writer. So I want to be able to do something. And one of the things that I have found is that I can really improve I can educate and I can really make these people who are speaking eloquently and who are writing the writing and doing the work, um, lecturing or creating video content or whatever it is that they do, I can I can have their back. I can make their job a little bit easier by by um, by respecting them more, by showing showing a better face to them. And Wikipedia, whether you believe it or not, is the place to be. Wikipedia is the most, one of the most highly viewed websites in the world. It is the go-to source for almost everyone, whether you respect it or not. Even if you say to yourself, I never read Wikipedia, I guarantee you you're reading Wikipedia, if you read. Because um, we can find cases all the time where newspapers and blogs and, and articles are just lifting words out of Wikipedia and just pasting them right into the uh, article they're writing. Politicians, um, the media, all kinds of people are getting their information from Wikipedia. They don't say, I found it on Wikipedia. They say, I, I read this. So Wikipedia is the place we're gonna educate. Wikipedia is only 12 years old. We have not even seen a time yet with people graduating from high school or college that haven't lived in a time where their entire knowledge base is with Wikipedia. They've always had Wikipedia. So we're not quite there yet, but it is the place to educate. It is the place to um, change minds. When people are starting to question their, when they're trying to question their, their beliefs, when they have questions about anything that's happening in their lives, or they just want to find out more information, they're very likely to want to go to Wikipedia to find that, to find that source. So what we want to do is we want to make sure that the Wikipedia articles that people are going to access, and we know they're going to access them, are in a very, very good shape, as respectable as we can possibly make them, completely following the rules of Wikipedia, and trying to make sure that it's interesting enough to read that people will read the page. So enough of David Silverman for the moment. So we're back to the gorilla. <laughs> So what I am going to do right now is I'm going to show you, as I said, the flyer, the paper that you have in front of you. You can look along with it if you want. Um, these are Wikipedia pages that we have written. These are Wikipedia pages that we have rewritten. They were in very bad shape if they existed at all. They were stubs. That's what they call stubs. It's when it's something that's just got like two or three sources. They're embarrassing in my view. Um, we really need to be able to have the backs of these people who are our spokespeople, regardless on if you enjoy, if you like that spokesperson or not. If it's somebody that you respect, wonderful. If it's somebody you don't necessarily respect, it doesn't matter. In the view of the world, they're looking at these people and they're saying they're an atheist, you're an atheist, you're all in the same camp. So 
if you want, they reflect us. So if their page is in rotten shape and nobody cares and they look like, you know, it looks like crap and, and there's no picture on it and it just looks like whatever, well, that's how it reflects on us. It reflects on our community. It reflects on us personally. If we do not have the backs of these people that we care about, that we respect, why should we expect anybody else to respect our people? Because we don't respect them. And this way, the GSOW project, I'm able to rewrite these pages and put them in a place where people are going to access them. And it's not just the, the average person reading the Wikipedia page. There are people all over the world that are accessing these Wikipedia pages, maybe media. Who do we go to to talk to about this subject? Oh, well, let's look at this Wikipedia page. Oh, this looks like the person we should go to. Look, they've, been, they've done other stuff. Here's some of the lectures we can watch and see if they're uh, be a good fit for our group or for this interview I'm doing or this book I'm writing or whatever. We need to make sure that these pages are respectful and they're uh, readable, not just a dry you know, resume kind of thing. So when they look good, we look good. Got it? Okay. So let's move on to our examples. And as I said, I'm going to go through these quite quickly, so don't expect to learn anything major from them. But these are all pages that we have spent some time on. The first ones I'm going to show you are people who have died. This person right here, Louis Flies, I assume you say it, is a Dutch businessman. He wrote and broadcast against the Nazis. He was in the Netherlands. He was also anti-organized religion. And before um, the Nazis invaded the Netherlands, and a few days later, he killed himself because he knew it was going to happen to him. This was in 1940. So this is a very interesting page um, to, to look at for the history of someone maybe we should respect uh, a little bit, and we feel like we have his back. Here's about Vosti McCollum. Maybe anybody's heard of Vosti McCollum? Anybody here? Oh, yeah, a couple of you guys. Okay. So you probably know uh, a little bit more about her than you think. 1948 Supreme Court case in Illinois, McCollum versus Board of Education. It ended religious and, uh, education in public schools. She was, uh, her little boy was uh, six or seven years old back in the day, uh, the 1970s, I believe, or 1960s, 19, maybe 1950s, late 1950s. Um, they had instruction in the Illinois school district one half an hour a week, you could go to a Catholic, Christian, or Jewish training. Your child had to go and had to attend. Well, her child, they're atheists. So her little boy had to sit in the hallway. He was bullied, and um, he had to sit out instruction. And um, she managed to say, no, I don't think so. And uh, she, they got it to the Supreme Court, and she won. So you probably have heard about this, the repercussions of this are massive. The parents, uh, the other parents and the teachers told her, just conform. Just put him in instruction in one of the classes. She's like, no, we're not doing that. Very, very important uh, woman um, standing up for rights. She also was the head of the pres uh, president of the American Humanist, Humanist Association from 62 to 65. Annie Gaylor co-founded Freedom from Religion Foundation. She's very big on reproductive rights. She died in 2015. These are all very interesting people, and you will be able, hopefully, to find their Wikipedia page of great interest. Here's another one. Um, yeah, you were one big Did I miss one? Uh, no, you. There's two pages. Two pages. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. Here's Vosti. I should probably actually pay attention to my slides, though. So Vosti, this is the Wikipedia page, how it existed before we were, we were involved in it. No photo, no nothing. And this is the page. Oops, I'm going backwards. Sorry, guys. I just got myself confused. This is the Wikipedia page as it exists now. After the paragraph on activism, it, it continues quite a bit more. This is the page that that represented Vosti before we got involved. You can see it was pretty, pretty small. Um, there was no photograph. It just didn't look all that respectable. This one right here next is Annie uh, Lloyd Gaylor that I was talking about. Okay, going on to uh, Alton Lemon. This is somebody, or Lemon. This is another person you may or may not have heard of. This is the man who um, is one of the most commonly cited Supreme Court cases, Lemon versus Kurtzman, 1971. Uh, schools were having tax funds paid to religious schools, and he was one of the plaintiffs against that, and it's now called the Lemon Test, and it's one of the most often cited cases um, in the Supreme Court, and he died in 2013. This is uh, a man that you, 
again, probably didn't even know. He um, um, was somebody you definitely want to look up. Ruth Green Herm Hermans, I hate to say that. She was a person who was in her older, uh, well, in her late 50s, I believe, um, wrote a book about um, skepticism and the, the Skeptic's Guide to the Bible. I think she wrote that in 79. She had always been, a, you know, kind of a sort of a believer. She wasn't somebody who, who uh, was a, you know, born again Christian or anything like that, but she finally read the entire book and she realized this was a crazy book. Um, she's also famous for the phrase that she said, there was a time when religion ruled the world. It was known as the Dark Ages. <clears throat> she had cancer. She, uh, I think it was throat cancer, and it um, went away for a period of time, and then she got it again, and she didn't tell anybody, but she knew she was going to die from it. So she killed herself in <clears throat> 1981. Um, she says, here's what she said, there wasn't one page of this book, talking about the Bible, that didn't offend me in some way. <laughs> Very interesting woman. Okay. So I, uh, all those people that I talked about were at one point um, had Wikipedia pages that were in very bad shape. Now, I want you to be able to remember that we have to remember our history. Obviously, they're not going to be interviewed by TV now or they're doing a TV show on them or anything like that. But these are all people that, to remember our history. And um, so now I'm going to talk about some other pages. These are all pages that we have written again or rewritten. These are all currently alive, as far as I know. And um, there, a lot of these people you probably already know. You're already looking through your list to see where I'm going to go to next, probably. <clears throat> these are not the most prominent atheists out there. These are just the pages that we have worked on extensively. We write on Wikipedia pages all the time. Sometimes we just put a paragraph. Sometimes we're correcting spelling. Sometimes we're adding photographs. Sometimes we're adding a two or three sentences. I could not include them in our list because this would be hundreds of pages long, if not more than hundreds of pages. So these are only the people who are associated with atheism. These are only the things that are pages that we have rewritten or created ourselves. <coughs> so the first one on the list is Matt Dillahunty. This is what I call a non-scroller. That was the entire Wikipedia page that existed for this man. It doesn't look very respectable, at least it had a, a photo. <coughs> Six citations is not a lot of citations. It's absolutely nothing. This is a person that, that lectures frequently on um, um, atheism. He's a speaker. He has uh, the Atheist Experience. I think that's a podcast. He also is on nonprofits radio. His page used to have six citations. And now this is what it looks like here and here. Let me get a drink. Hold on a second. Can I walk up? Sorry, sorry. I didn't realize that was going to be a drink. Iced tea. You can read it now. <laughs> Maybe not. So now there's 41 citations. We started out with five, I think, or six, was it? Six citations, now we're at 41. So this man looks a lot more respectable. Now, when you're looking at something like that with some nice photos, uh, we're trying to tell the person's story, not in a gossipy kind of way. We're trying to tell the story in a, a readable kind of way. But we want to be inspired. We want to have people who are inspired by reading about these people. We want people to realize that Atheists are your neighbors, they're the people who are bagging your groceries, they're the person who's operating you on, on, on the operating table, they're the person that you go to your therapist, they're the person who's doing your back massages. We're just average people, we're just really just people. We're not some kind of baby eating, scary kind of group, right? A lot of people do still think that. So by having these pages in, in readable pages, putting up pictures of their cat, you know, these different things, just make sure that people feel that these are real people. We try to subtly add things in, like, you know, they, in their spare time, they like to ski, uh, there's, and um, they live with their wife and their dog, whose name is Blue, in the mountains of Montana or something. We just add that in, just because so that you can feel that they're just a regular person. Not that we all live in the mountains of Montana, that sounds pretty good some days. Okay, <clears throat> that was Matt Dillahunty. Annie Laurie, Annie Laurie Gaylor, this is the daughter of the Annie Gaylor I mentioned a few minutes ago. Um, her Wikipedia page was not in great shape. I think, no, actually I think we created this. This is a brand new page. She also co-founded the Freedom From Religion Foundation. Here's 
Eddie Tabash. I know that uh, Leonard over here knows who Eddie Tabash is. Um, he is the, make sure I get this straight because Leonard will correct me if I'm wrong. He is the board of directors for CFI. Chair, chair. Mm -hmm. chair. He's a chairman, he's, he's up there, right, okay. He's the chairman of, uh, of CFI, that's the Center for Inquiry. He is an expert on the establishment clause of the Constitution. He often debates and he talks to people and you know he's, he's uh, quite a, a, a great speaker on um, constitutional you know, establishment clause and that kind of thing. And I took that photo. I am, I am a professional photographer by, by living. I, sp I specialize in children. And um, I love taking photographs. So to both of these photographs you'll see on this page are mine. I was at the Center for Inquiry and he said, he found out what I did for, uh, that I work on this Wikipedia thing. And he said something about, I looked at his Wikipedia page and I said, the picture that was up there was horrible. I said, let's go outside. And I stood him against the wall, I took that picture. And three, three seconds later, I, you know, I was uploading it up to Wikimedia. And now he has this beautiful photo on there. I'm so proud of it. I think it's such a nice photo of him. Um, Jerry Coyne, maybe some people know of Jerry Coyne or have read his blog. He's also written a book called Why, Why Evolution is True. He's at the University of Chicago. I believe he's just um, retired. He's the author of several books. He is extremely active in the um, discussion of evolution, creationism, atheism, um, just a kind of a prominent figure in, in the community. Jerry Coyne, we rewrote, rewrote his Wikipedia page, and then after rewriting it, we checked, you know, sent it to him and said, hey, did we do a good job? And he says, please leave the picture of my cat on there, because I love the picture of me and my cat. So we left it up on there for him, and um, the person who was rewriting this, I didn't do all this, I have a team of people who, who works on these. The person who was writing on um, Jerry Coyne's page asked me, please, can I be done? Every time I turn around, I find another source for this man. He's so prolific. <coughs> okay, we're going to go somewhere else with this one. Nathan Phelps. Anybody here know who Nathan Phelps is? Yeah. I'm surprised not you. Um, anybody here know who the Westboro Baptists are? Yeah. Okay, this is the son of Fred Phelps from Westboro Baptist. He clicks in your head now. Like, oh. Okay, Nathan Phelps left at the age of 18. In fact, he was standing in his kitchen looking at the clock, and when the clock struck midnight, he left. Um, he had a very bad uh, life with his father. Um, I lectured in QED in uh, Manchester, England a couple years ago, and he was also one of the speakers, one of the nicest people you will ever know. He's also a director, I believe, of CFI Canada. He's an um, outspoken uh, civil rights, uh, gay rights. Um, he's also an atheist, and his Wikipedia page was in very bad shape. Uh, when people are training with me, because I train, that's what the project is, Girl Skepticism on Wikipedia is completely trained. I do all the training. Um, it happens on Facebook and a uh, secret group with the, that you can't see. It's just, we train there and that's where it happens. But uh, his editor, who was working on the Wikipedia page, had no rush. He says, you know, we kept going back and forth, doing feedback on it. Oh, why don't you try to find a better photo? Oh, why don't you try to expand this section a little bit more? Why don't you try to do this? Well, there was no rush. But one day I noticed on Facebook that Nathan Phelps put up a post saying that his father had been moved to hospice. This is Fred Phelps, the head of the Westboro Baptist. And I said to myself, oh my gosh, this is going to be huge. Huge! We can't look at that word anyway, Any, you know, you think of a Trump now, I'm sorry. Sorry I had to bring up the team word. So, anyway, Nathan Phelps only, like, my group, just like a handful of people knew that this Wikipedia page had almost been completely rewritten of sitting in a user space that nobody could see. And it was pretty much done. So, because my group is all over the world, I have people in every, all these different time zones, before I went to bed that night and I saw this post by Nathan Phelps about his father moving to hospice, I, I posted, somebody get that page up alive now before the media hits this. And so we were able to, people in London, I think were uh, right away going to it and he was uh, going through it, making sure the grammar was correct. And then the editor woke up on the East Coast who was in charge of that page and he went, 
And he went to the Westboro Baptist Wikipedia page, as well as the Fred Phelps Wikipedia page, and he put in several mentions of Nathan Phelps. You know how you hyperlink to it so that it, you go to one page and you say, oh, it's this. So he put several mentions of Nathan Phelps in the Wikipedia page for Westboro Baptist and for um, the um, Fred Phelps page, because we knew what was going to happen. So he went into hospice. Now these are Wikipedia stats. We do not know how long a person stays on a Wikipedia page. We do not know if they're a unique visitor. All we know is, did somebody access the Wikipedia page? And this is the Wikipedia page views for Westboro Baptist. You can see the first major hit um, is whenever the media started to find out, wait, he's went into hospice? And you see how the media hit that. And then it went down, and then he died. You see that? It's, it's right there in front of your eyes of how, how that hits. These are Wikipedia stats. This is because people all over the world went nuts, and they had to find out what this Fred Phelps, what, what? Westboro Baptist, what? And if you can read that, which I don't think you can do, but they received, this Wikipedia page in this month, they received 210,000 views one month. So, and because GSOW existed, because my editor was rewriting this page and we got it up in time, here's what happened to the Nathan Phelps Wikipedia page. It's, it's a mirror, right? You can see, the media said, oh my gosh, what do we do? Who do we contact? And they said, oh, this Nathan Phelps guy looks reasonable. Let's talk to him. He's not some deranged, crazy person that hates bags and all that. This guy, and here's his contact information. Here's some interesting things about him. And they can read his story. So he got media attention like crazy. And you can see the click-throughs. People went from um, the Westboro, I mean, yeah, the Westboro Baptist Church to the Nathan Phelps page. Just boom, boom. It's not exact. The, there's still a spike. Nathan Phelps page hit 76,000 views that month, whereas the Westboro Baptist Church had 210,000. So it's not an exact where they go from one to the other, but you can see that there is a, there's a proportional uh, distribution. We know that, that what we do has an impact on, on the media. And here's one more, and I can't for the life of me remember why this was a big deal. But Westboro Baptist, and that looks like um, August of 2015, towards the end of the month, right around the 24th of August. I don't remember what it was, but something happened with the Westboro Baptist in the media. The world said, oh gosh, what the heck's going on? And 51,000 people went to the Wikipedia page that month. And again, Nathan Phelps' page did the same thing. You can see how it went. It had 4,000 views, so obviously way off. Um, he's normally getting about 100 views a day. And then you can see up here, he's got, what is that, about 1,000 views that day and 1,000 views the next day, and then it just tapers off in the same way. See how the curve is almost exactly the same for uh, Westboro Baptist versus Nathan Phelps. So this is why it's important. We do not know when something's going to be important that's got to be in the media's eye, but we do know that we have to have these pages ready just in case because we don't know when it's going to happen. I also want people to work on Wikipedia pages that inspire them, that they enjoy. Here's another thing that Wikipedia, GSOW can do. GSOW can write in other languages. And we're not talking about a translation using a computer. I have people all over the world who are native speakers of other languages. This is the Nathan Phelps page in Dutch. This is the Nathan Phelps page in Russian. This is a Nathan Phelps page in, no, never mind. This is Emory Emory. <laughs> Anybody know Emory Emory? Yes. And that is his real name if you look at it. Um, Emory Emory has a podcast with uh, Heather Henderson, who's the page next. Heather Henderson, Emory Emory have a wicked, oh, no, God, it's on my brain. Have a podcast called uh, Skeptically Yours, and they also, they also do Ardent Atheists. Uh, Heather Henderson and Emory Emory are both friends of mine. Um, you'll see down here in this right hand corner, there's an audio. That's because I asked them to create some kind of audio. You can click on it, it's their voice, they're talking about themselves. It makes the Wikipedia page even more interesting to hear in your own words them saying something about themselves. This is something that GSOW tries to do on every page that we can. So, uh, Emory Emory and Heather Henderson have been quite active in the atheist community. They, um, I will mention them again in a minute. 
This is a Dutch um, activist. He has been working in the Netherlands trying to get the buses campaign, you know, where they write something on the side of the buses that happened here in America. Also some billboards. This is Himameta. Everybody knows Himameta, the friendly atheist. He blogs at the friendly atheist. He also has a podcast. He also has a, a YouTube channel. He has written several books. He is uh, just a really awesome kind of guy. We rewrote his Wikipedia page. This is Ryan Bell. As you guys know, the year about year without God. It's CNN. There's a documentary going to be out on him pretty soon. And Emory Emory and Heather Henderson, the, well, Emory Emory especially, um, has been working on a documentary about Ryan Bell. When it hits the media, which it should be soon, um, then the Wikipedia page already exists. It's already there for people to be able to find. They're going to be able to get great information about this man. And um, it already sets him up as being somebody who is respectable, who people care about, who is somebody you should probably interview and, um, <clears throat> and uh, pay attention to. OK. I'm going to move over here to a couple other people. This is um, Sanala Adamarku. This is one of those people that, uh, from India that you find is absolutely amazing. This man has uh, been speaking out of it against Godman. Um, he has been um, on TV where a Godman tried to kill him for a few hours, uh, saying, Kli, 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 I'm killing you, I kill you, I kill you, and he's waving knives on him, and he's waving the knife on him. He had over a billion views. Um, is a, they, there was a TV show that just kept going on. They just took everything off that was supposed to happen a few hours later and they just kept it going while this guy was trying to kill him on, on, um, on the TV and he just laughed through the whole thing. But he got in a lot of trouble because a Catholic church had a miracle um, water dripping out of the eyes and people were going and getting water from the, the eyes of the, of the statue and he went and he investigated. It turned out it was a toilet it was dripping water from underground. These people were drinking water that was, you know, toilet water. And um, the Catholic Church had a fit. He's in India. They, the Catholic Church is very big over there. And they said he has to apologize or whatever. He had to flee India because he was going to be arrested. So now he's in exile in Finland. So he would love to come back to India, but unfortunately he can't. But he's quite an interesting person. <clears throat> Sean Faircloth, he is a, or he was what was considered like the bulldog of Richard Dawkins. He was um, in charge of the secular, I um, can't think of what it's called off, uh, but he, coalition, yeah. He's the author of Attack of the Theocrats. He's a politician from Maine. Now he's the mayor of Bangor, Maine. And um, Tom Flynn, executive director for the Council of Secular Humanism. At CFI, he's also the anti clause I think they called him. Um, he wrote a book called The Trouble with Christmas. Uh, he's the editor of, um, the editor of um, Free Inquiry magazine, Leo Igwe. This is another very important person to know, just like Sanaa Adamarku. This man has been, this man has been beaten up. He is uh, from Nigeria. He's a human rights activist, and he's currently having to live in Germany. Um, quite an inspirational person, you know, we can go and we can have our meetings here in a, in a place like this, but as you know, in some parts of the world, you can't even say the word atheist um, without having the risk of maybe being beaten up or killed. And it is a very sad state of affairs that we live in right now. So Leo Igwe, we have translated this page into many different languages. I believe this is Dutch, and this one right here is probably German, I can't say it right at the moment, but he has uh, done quite a bit in um, activism, trying to get a lot of things changed in, in the, um, Nigeria. Here it is in Russian. This is Seth Andrews, right here. Here he comes. Seth Andrews rewrote the Wikipedia page in English and it was deleted. So it wasn't deleted because he's an atheist, it's because we did not have enough citations to make him notable. So the page is sitting in our back channel as soon as we get a citation or two that we need to get it so that this page is strong so it will hold on to Wikipedia. 
Um, we've translated into Russian and Dutch already. <laughs> so he has a Wikipedia page in Dutch and Russian, and then we're still waiting to make it live in English. Um, I should point out that people do say that, you know, there's some prejudice against us for uh, being atheists and things like that. On Wikipedia, there isn't. Um, if it is, we have to have the same rules apply to our community and, and all the other standards that apply to the psychics out there, the homeopaths, and so on. We have to have rules, and the rules have to be equally applied. I can't expect to put somebody up that I think is notable and then take down a page of a psychic for the same reasons. So we really have to follow all the rules correctly. But Seth Anders is very likely, we'll have that page up here maybe in a few weeks. We just have a lot coming. Here is this uh, page in Russian. This is Miriam uh, uh, Namazi. I hope I said that right. And uh, she is a outspoken Iranian um, secular activist, another person who is not living in Iran, I believe. And uh, she's outspoken. She's just very awesome. I believe we, re we wrote this Wikipedia page a few years ago. And uh, Saki Bu. I wrote this page, I rewrote this page. Hutchinson, she is a author of White Knight's Black Paradise. She has quite a bit of books out, Moral, Moral Combat. She runs this Black Skeptics Group in LA. She is a um, outspoken um, human rights and uh, just a pretty awesome person. You can see we also got some audio on hers too down here in the corner. And I purposely went to her and said, look, I cannot pronounce your name myself. Can you please put this audio for us so we can put it on your Wikipedia page so people can know how to pronounce your name. Okay, so I'm gonna pause and the next thing I'm gonna do is the last little bit. We're in the home stretch here, guys. I'm really looking forward to your questions. And this is all groups of things that we have worked on that are things that we have worked on, projects, people, or the ones I just went and did. Now this is Recovering from Religion, it's a support group, and guess what? It's for people who are recovering from religion who are leaving and um, need to help find jobs, need to have support, they don't know how to tell their family, um, and so on. This is the Military Association of Atheists and Freethinkers. Pretty obvious what that means. They were at the Reason Rally in 2012. European Humanist Federation. This is the Reason Rally 2012. The Reason Rally 2016 is another page that is in the process of being worked on. Um, this is the book, God Sent Me. I don't, we don't always work on pages that we are gonna be huge hits, like the Nathan Phelps. Sometimes we work on pages just because we want to. This is a book I found a review in the Skeptical and Hot Choir magazine, and I said, oh, that looks good. And so I didn't have to read the book. All I have to do is find all the secondary sources, some interviews, and I put together this Wikipedia page in probably six hours. And then I contacted the author, and he was just such an interesting guy. I should let you know, every time we rewrite a Wikipedia page, we fall in love with the person. You can't not, even if they are the opposite of us. You know, we have several UFOologists we've written Wikipedia pages for, and you just get into their lives, and you start reading everything they've written, and you watch their article, I mean, not everything they've written, but you read a lot about them, you look at their interviews, and their podcasts, and their the lectures they give, and you just like the person. You know, you just can't not. It's just, you feel like you know them better than almost anybody else knows them. It's, it's pretty, pretty interesting to do, this, this project we have. So God sent me, um, that's the book. Here's my soul. I sold my soul on eBay. This is the him at Metha. I, met, I uh, mentioned him a little bit ago. When we finished the him at Metha page, we put up the, somebody rewrote the page for, the, for his book. This is quite a funny book. He goes to, he does lecture on this every so often. He did um, sell his soul on eBay. He went to different people's churches. He said, you know, sponsor me and I will go to your church. And he wrote about it. And this is one of those fundamental, fundamentalist pastor's wives there he's got a picture with. He said she was quite nice and everybody was very respectful to him. And, um, it was uh, eye-opening, some of the things. He was able to give lots of information back to the churches afterwards and tell them, okay, here's the problem with your church. You weren't friendly, people were grouped into little clusters, and he was able to give them all sorts of help. He's the friendly atheist. 
uh, Institute for the Study of Secularism in Society and Culture. I can't even remember. It's been so long ago that I rewrote that Wikipedia page, but at all they do. But if it's interesting to you, you might want to check that out. And this is, this is the last one on our list. This is the Robert Ingersoll Birthplace Museum. This page was one citation long when I got a hold of it. Um, this is also Tom Flynn, who I mentioned earlier at CFI. This is his baby, kind of. It's a museum that uh, he sponsors and runs. And I went in and did some history, some research, and I was able to uh, improve this Wikipedia page. OK, so with that said, what does this all mean? We know that people are looking at Nathan Phelps' page if your dad so, just so happens to die and he's the, the leader of the Westboro Baptist group. But it, again, what does it really mean? Are people even looking at what we're doing? How, how, you know, are we changing minds? We don't know. We really don't know. We can, we can assume we are. But when you're writing on Wikipedia, there's no one who's, who's writing to you, giving you a high five, saying, hey, great, you changed my mind. They don't even know who we are. We're just people, like writing an Encyclopedia Britannica. We don't know. But we do know that people are viewing the Wikipedia pages, and we know that this is the best chance we have for educating people. We also know that, that unless we're planning on becoming one of those speakers that, like Christopher Hitchens or um, uh, Richard Dawkins or somebody like that, or Dave, Daniel Dennett or David Silverman, we're not likely to change minds that way. We do know that we can have the backs of these people. We can inspire other people to do more. We can introduce people to other people who are going to help them become better and, and uh, do the activism that they want to do. We do have a way of accessing, as you saw, how many views are on a Wikipedia page. Like I said, we don't know how long they stay on a Wikipedia page. We don't know if they read the whole thing. We don't know if they're a unique user. It might be the same person coming back and forth to the same page for other reasons. But we do know how many pages, how many times the page has been accessed. So for this group that I gave you in this page, I know the number of how many times those Wikipedia pages have been accessed. And I'm about to give you that number. So from the time that Wikip GSOW assumes. What's GSOW? Oh, Real Skepticism on Wikipedia. From the time the GSOW assumed that we made that page live, either rewrote it or we created it. We have a way of, we're saying like, okay, on July 1st, 2015, we made that page live. And we, after it's made live, anybody can edit it. But what I did is I put together a way of counting how many views are up in made to our pages. And of just the pages that I've shown you right now, as of yesterday when I counted this, 525,094 people or times the Wikipedia pages have been accessed that I mentioned right here. So it's half a million views on just these atheist pages. That's more than any podcast is gonna get in the same amount of time. That's more than any blog. And it may be more than most books ever see read. And every day, probably, a thousand more views are on these pages, and every day a thousand more views, and every day a thousand more views on these pages. And GSOW has not, as I said, only worked on atheists. This is just a small segment of the stuff that we have worked on in the last five years. This is a small little group. What we do is we are actively training. Um, as I said, I train on Facebook and email, but you have to be part of Facebook if you're going to join my group. I don't actively recruit people to join because it is a commitment. I would rather you come to um, ask me questions or to look at the uh, interviews I have on YouTube from our editors so that you know what you're getting yourself into. But people can have absolutely no um, experience editing. All you need to be able to do is use a computer and we will train you. But we know that a lot of people can't do this. Either they don't have the time or the interest or, or whatever. We know we're not gonna get everybody to be able to do this. But I'm asking you to support us by either telling other people about it or if you follow us on Facebook or Twitter or wherever, please just share our posts. If you know of something that needs to be done, email us. We're probably gonna put it on a long list. It's gonna be there for like you know a year or two because we don't have that many editors. So there's only about 65 of us writing all over the world in different languages. 
But um, if you have questions about editing Wikipedia or anything like that, I'll be able to answer those in a minute or after. I do want to point out one, uh, we have one of my editors here, Jim. Say hi to everybody. This is Jim, he's been with us as a uh, GSOW editor for several years now. And uh, Jim has worked on many pages that um, are just, are, are read quite often. So if, if you have questions about Wikipedia and I'm like I'm involved in another conversation, Jim, I'm sure I'll be happy to answer anything you want to know about GSOW, about what it's like to be an editor, um, how tyrannical I might be, um, what, what, what this is all about, or quest, general questions about answering Wikipedia, because Jim would be able to answer those as well, just as well as I am, maybe better, because he's uh, very technical. So I'm going to leave you with one more thing why this is important. Just, just yesterday, two of my editors were, were speaking on the secret cabal. That's where our, our group is on Facebook. It's called the secret cabal. And they were talking about how um, one man was interviewed by a school, you know, a friend's child for a project on religion in uh, an atheism in the school classroom. He was the only atheist that they knew. So the family had to, went to him and asked him questions about atheism and, the kid, and he, the kid asked him and he was able to answer the questions and then the child did his presentation in class and this classroom was really impressed with all the answers that, the, that this atheist had given. And he said that the, they had a really good response because to a lot of these kids they'd never heard of an atheist you know, or talking to another atheist or anything like that. So he was able to leave them with a good impression of atheism. And that's kind of what we're doing with the GSOW project. We're really trying to make sure that these people have a good face, they're respectable, they look like just everybody else, and maybe they've had struggles in their lives and, and, and things too. We're hopefully that's reflected on the Wikipedia pages and it inspires other people so that they don't know, so that they can know that there's other people who are atheists out there as well. And that's all I got for you. So, how do you want to handle questions? All right, you guys. So we will set up our mic back here, right here. You're gonna have to come. Give me the hard ones. No lemon throwing. What? Lemon keep your, throwing. Keep your questions brief. Whoever's got the lemons, don't throw them. <laughs> keep your questions brief. Uh, we're watching. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, you want to come here or, um, yeah. Hi. Two quick questions. Uh, first of all, we can now put up an ACSJ Wikipedia page. I have done many groups, many, many different things. I have to have secondary sources. I'd be happy to do it. I just rewrote the Wikipedia page for New Mexicans of Science and Reason. Just finished it and went up live a couple days ago. I've written many Wikipedia pages for groups. I think it's extremely important, but it is very difficult. I have had really strong citations. You can talk to me afterwards, and I will be happy to look at any citations you have, and we can do it. Well, what would qualify as a citation? For you have to have secondary it? citations. Are you been? Have you been in the media? Has the media interviewed you? Has um, it, it because primary sources would be like, oh, we did this, we did that. We have so many people show up at our meetups. That's nothing. Um, any any church congregation could say the same thing, and they could have a Wikipedia page. It has to be you are considered the experts. Have has somebody in the media come and, and interviewed you? Uh, if there was something happening in the area, would they come to you to, to get your opinion on the subject? So yeah, that's what it would be. So it needs to be secondary. They may, they may exist. Okay, so my real question is... No, that was, that was not um, do we Do you find that when you change a page that it is often re-changed? Do you have to re-go back and constantly maintain it's it? Or is it, is it constantly taken down of what you put up? Um, in our group, no, almost never happens. It almost always happens to people who are brand new and they're trying to edit and they don't really know what they're doing. It happens constantly to them because the rules of Wikipedia are strict and they are, they are universally reinforced. And it is a little confusing, but the way I train, once you've gone through my training, nothing gets reverted. Or if it does, it's very rare. Are there no trolls and stuff like that? Oh yeah, there's trolls, but they can take it down and put it back up. I mean, I, Jim, I know, has had some reverted in the past, but that was back in the day when we were learning how to edit right together. Hi. Hi. 
Do you have any uh, problems where you need to go to pages of theists and edit their pages where they put up matters of fact that are wrong or things that are unnecessarily biased and so on? Do you do that kind of editing? We could do that kind of editing. Um, thank you. Um, we could easily do that kind of editing. Typically, GSOW works on pages to, to, to improve the pages of the people who are our spokespeople. Once we're done with all those people, maybe we'll get around to looking at the theists' pages and making sure they're factual. But most of the time, those are already being done by normal editors of Wikipedia. Most editors of Wikipedia are skeptics. They, uh, you have to have citations for everything you do. Uh, they may not identify themselves that way, but they are. They, if they're following the rules of Wikipedia, they pretty much are. Um, we could do that. We've done that on some pages, like for psychics, uh, spontaneous human combustion, um, lots of other pages we have done that. UFOologists, um, cryptozoology, some different kinds of things. But if a person joined my project who was interested in doing that, they could totally go through and do it. They would learn how to train. They would train first with me, learning how to actually go through and make lasting changes to Wikipedia. And then once they're done training, they could go and they could go through all the theist pages they wanted and check the citations and, and take all that junk off of there. There's no reason why they can't do it. Thanks. Hi. Hi. Uh, got two things. Uh, first thing is August 25th, uh, 2015. The Foo Fighters brick rolled the West Coast Carabao Baptist Church when they were doing a protest. That's probably why you saw that spike there. What day was it? Uh, August 25th, 2015. The Foo Fighters did it? Yep. They're oh, well, there you go. You guys are a smart group. I know yeah. that. And uh, my next so my actual question is, uh, does Wikipedia do translation services, or is that something you have to do yourself? I mean, do you put a page up and do they automatically translate into other languages, or? Okay, so I, first off, I want to make sure you send me a link to that Foo Fighter recording site. That okay. My email's on there. Um, yes, that sounds fascinating. I love recording. Um, no. And uh, Wikipedia, all the different languages have, they have their own language, like there's Dutch Wikipedia, there's Japanese Wikipedia, there's Portuguese Wikipedia. They have different rules, and all the pages, and they don't communicate with each other, the different languages. GSOW is one of two projects that I know of that people are trying to communicate more with the other languages. If um, I just, there's another Wikipedia group out there, this is a very important group, that is a, uh, a doctor, like a medicine one. What they're trying to do is they're taking like a page on Ebola or diarrhea or prenatal vitamins. They picked out like maybe 50 topics that are essential to the entire world medically that should be well written and they're trying to get that into every language possible, every African language, every language in every Chinese language, everything. They have to pay a lot of cases to find translation services that will do it. It's a really good project. Um, if you find that interesting, you know, you could donate some money to their way and they can get these things changed into other languages. I have people who, who joined the project who are native speakers of other languages and then they write the pages and they translate. So no, Wikipedia has nothing to do with it. It's just some person would say, hey, I can read and write in Russian. Well, let me get it. And they'll take the page and they'll translate it. And we translate them back. So we'll take a page that's written in Dutch and we'll change it into English. Oh, cool. Yeah. Thanks. Come on, I haven't had a hard question yet. So, uh, you know, this is a great project. You want to make sure, like, Matt Delahunt has a great page and all this great information. How do you deal with things that are, like, the criticism? You know, everyone's great, but everybody also has some baggage. So how do you keep your objectivity and everything? Okay. And, you know, if the criticism comes up, you know, you guys make sure you put that criticism up there and make sure that, you know, being objective, you know, and, and of course, that will obviously have to have your citations, but I mean, how do you guys reconcile all that? Okay, stuff? that's a great question. I haven't had that before. Criticism is very important on Wikipedia. We want all the criticism to be on the Wikipedia page we possibly can get if it's notable. We can't put somebody's attacking them by a blog or somebody was mad at them on Twitter or they had this argument. That can't be put on the Wikipedia page. It has to be somebody notable has criticized this person or project. And if so, we're going to make sure it's on the Wikipedia page. Because if we don't put it on the Wikipedia page, it 
will get there if somebody else put it there. So we want to make sure we've got it on there and it's kind of in a nice controlled kind of way. If you looked at my personal Wikipedia page, which I have one, I have a Wikipedia page mainly because I have been criticized. We have uh, um, uh, some very notable people. I don't know if you know who Deepak Chopra is. He's is definitely not a friend of mine. Um, he's uh, very upset about uh, the fact that I have this group called Gorilla Skeptics and we're making changes. He's sure that I've changed his Wikipedia page. Uh, the Natural News Guy, what's his name, Mike Adams? I think it's not Mike Adams. What was it? Natural News, is that Mike, Mike Adams? Or is he in I don't know, I get them all confused. But uh, he has been blogging about me the last few days, uh, last few weeks ago. Uh, called me the KKK of uh, skepticism. Um, those kinds of things, he's notable, so the criticism can come on my Wikipedia page. Um, I don't think that one's on there yet, but there's other stuff on there. I've been endorsed by the Brzezinski Clinic. I don't know if you know who that is. Cancer quick, quack. Any of these people who speak out about us is just like, Ding! 